Welcome to the May 2020 School of Nursing Convocation Ceremony. I think it is safe to say that this was not the spring semester that any of us anticipated. As a graduating class, you experienced radical changes, changes that you have dealt with with grace and flexibility to meet the course and program objectives. You deserve a very special congratulations for meeting your important graduation goal in the midst of especially challenging circumstances. On behalf of the faculty and other administrators of the University of Texas at Austin School of Nursing, I am proud to recognize 149 very special graduates. Among the graduates, we will recognize one student who will receive the highest academic degree in nursing, the Doctor of Philosophy or PhD. UT Austin had one of the earliest PhD programs in nursing in the nation and we have a strong history of graduating leaders in research, education, and national service. In addition, 19 students will receive the Doctor of Nursing Practice, or DNP, degree, the highest degree in the clinical practice of nursing. We remember today DNP student Robert Francis Maharis, who passed away in November of this year. Francis was an outstanding nurse practitioner and DNP student. His fellow students and our school honor his memory on this day when he would have graduated. We also recognize 52 students who will receive the Master of Science in Nursing degree. Seven students have earned a postmaster's certification and 70 students who will receive the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree, the entry to professional practice. Although our faculty cannot be with you in person today, I know they join me in congratulating you on your accomplishments. Our faculty includes experienced, renowned teachers, clinicians, and researchers who strongly believe that the nursing profession is vital to the public good. Throughout their teaching at all levels of our curriculum, the faculty are committed to preparing students to address the many significant healthcare challenges of the 21st century, including the global pandemic caused by the COVID-19 virus that we face today. Many of you are aware that one of our own alumna and clinical instructor of nursing, Darlene Cookie Wilson, is not with us today because she volunteered to serve 12 weeks in the emergency room of Elmhurst Hospital in Queens, one of the hardest hit hospitals in the nation. Cookie is a shining example of a Longhorn nurse. A graduate of West Point and a helicopter pilot who served her country in Iraq, she completed her master's degree in nursing at UT Austin in 1998 and has been teaching in nursing since 2014. Cookie, like all of our faculty, embodies the core purpose of the University of Texas at Austin, which is to transform students' lives for the benefit of society. I am confident that most of you have heard it said, what starts here changes the world. Well, I would venture to add, what starts here heals the world. This isn't because we prepare our students with all the specific technical and clinical skills and knowledge they will need in the professional practice of nursing, although we most certainly do. It isn't because we provide them the necessary foundation on which they can build successful and rewarding careers in clinical settings or in research or academia, although we do that as well. We say what starts here heals the world because in the great tradition of the University of Texas at Austin, we prepare our students to be continual learners and courageous leaders whose care for individuals and families in our community combines the latest in the art and science of nursing. To our graduates today, I say you are entering the profession of nursing or advancing your career at a very special time. Our nation has been rocked by the impact of a virus that we had never encountered. We have seen more than 70,000 Americans die of all ages and of all backgrounds. We have seen and will continue to see economic challenges from the important efforts to contain the spread of the virus. And we have seen heroes, nurses who are courageously answering the call and making a difference in this pandemic. The need for and value of nurses, especially the well-educated Longhorn nurse leaders graduating today, has never been greater. 
Frankly, during the last several months, I have watched the nightly news with tears in my eyes and pride and admiration in my heart. As I saw nurses on the front lines, caring for patients, even knowing the risks to their own health. I saw nurses stepping up and advocating for the needs of their patients, their families, their community, and their colleagues. I saw nurses protest when science was ignored. I saw nurses make the incredibly valiant choice to volunteer to work in highly impacted areas. And I saw nurses finding creative ways to connect dying patients with their families, and in fact, to be the family so that no one dies alone. It has been tough and heart rendering, but I have never been prouder to be a nurse. And I believe that the world now understands more clearly and more than it ever has how valuable nursing is to health and survival. For nurses all over the world, the year 2020 started on a positive note. Not only was it the 200th birthday of Florence Nightingale, the founder of modern nursing, but the World Health Organization designated 2020 to be the year of the nurse and midwife in recognition of nursing's contributions to modern health care. Just a few days into this celebratory year, we saw the beginning of a global pandemic that would be unlike anything we had faced before. As the global pandemic quickly expanded, we kept two simple principles in mind at the University of Texas at Austin as we grappled daily with new developments related to the COVID-19 virus. Our first priority was the health and safety of our students, staff, and faculty. And our second priority was to support our students in continuing their educational journey. In what seemed to happen almost overnight, we made decisions to move instruction almost entirely online. To give you an idea of the magnitude of that change, at UT Austin on March 30th, 2020, the first day that our university went all online, we generated 5.2 million meeting minutes in Zoom with more than 157,000 participants. With only two weeks to prepare, our university faculty and staff shifted more than 9,000 classes involving over 49,000 students to all online instruction. You were all part of these historic changes. Students had to adjust to a closed campus and many had to move home. Together, we had to figure out how you could still meet course objectives and graduate. There were many painful choices for me and for all of you, and our path was most assuredly different than the one we had so carefully planned, but the goal was to the same, to see all of you graduate today and congratulations, you did it. I mentioned that it was the 200th birthday of Florence Nightingale, and I admit that she's been an inspiration during these difficult times. In fact, modern nursing was born in the crucible of the Crimean War in 1854. When Florence Nightingale arrived in the Crimea to offer assistance, she became a firsthand witness to horrific conditions thousands of wounded soldiers with virtually no care. 10 times more soldiers died from typhus, typhoid, cholera, and dysentery than from battle wounds. And in 1854, they knew about as much about cholera and typhus as we knew about the novel coronavirus in January, 2020. Perhaps Florence and her band of 38 nurses are the epitome of the nursing shortages we see today. But Florence did not run away from the challenge. She ran to it. In what might have been the first quality improvement project in nursing, she disinfected the hospitals, secured supplies, and focused on providing nutrition and sanitation to her patients. During those nine months, with attention to the critical aspects of the person and the environment, she brought the mortality rate of the wounded from 42% to 2% levels unheard of at the time, and all due to nursing care and leadership. The germ theory was still new and controversial in 1854, but Nightingale insisted on consistent hand washing and hygiene practices, while those were still considered unnecessary by the medical and army administrators. Most importantly, not only did Florence do, but she collected data 
analyzed the data and interpreted it and wrote letters and texts detailing her methods and the outcomes and advocating for change. Her work and her persistence advocating for her patients eventually led to the redesign of the British military health system across the world. Think about it. Florence Nightingale, a nurse, set the foundation almost 200 years ago for the way we are combating the coronavirus today. Assess the problem, find your resources, implement stringent disinfection routines, use best practices, and most importantly, advocate and put the patient first. Each of you who are graduating today chose to pursue your education in nursing because you knew that you wanted to make a difference in the world. And you could never have imagined just a year ago how much this world would need you. But you knew you would never be content to stand by as others suffer from disease and discrimination, poverty and neglect. And so you chose to become a nurse and for some of you who made this choice to enter the profession of nursing some years ago, you chose to continue, continue your education in nursing to prepare yourself with the skills and knowledge to make an even greater impact. And you chose a university and a school of nursing where your drive to be your best would be tested through a rigorous curriculum and your desire to learn and grow would be fulfilled through service, whether it was in the classroom, the campus or the community. I am so happy, as I'm sure your family and friends are as well, to see that you have made it this far. You have adapted and persevered through classes, exams, hours of clinical experiences, papers, skills labs, and most recently virtual clinicals and Zoom classes. And now you are ready to launch into your careers, your life, your new positions, and we are so eager to find out one day how far you've gone and what you will accomplish. Graduates, we are very proud of your achievements and accomplishments to date. We know that throughout your career in nursing, you will excel with integrity and the spirit that nothing is impossible. You will serve as leaders in nursing in Texas and beyond. The quality of nursing and healthcare will be enhanced as you use your leadership, your critical thinking and clinical judgment skills to serve society by promoting the comfort, dignity, and health of those you serve. Congratulations to each and every graduate of the class of May 2020. You are all very special and we will never forget you or this virtual commencement. And congratulations to your families and friends who now have their very own nurse to turn to for help and guidance in health and illness. I know you join me, graduates, in thanking them for all of their support that helped you reach your goal today. I would like to close my remarks with a special song written and recorded by UT School of Nursing alumna, Dr. Carolyn Phillips, with the support of her nonprofit, Songs for the Soul, and songwriter, Kristen Davidson. Together, they used interviews with graduating students and faculty to create this special musical gift for the class of 2020. Congratulations and hook them. A shadow where a capstone should have been A missing piece where doubt comes creeping in It's so hard letting go With no goodbye at the end Take a moment, take a breath Trust your team, try your best Remember what you've trained to do Who's gonna step up? 
shining in 